Monique Fissor has built her career highlighting Kiwi cuisine internationally in New York City, taking traditional Māori dishes and turning them into gourmet works of art. And I can't wait to see what she can produce in my humble kōta. Kia ora hoa. No mai. Haere mai. Welcome Hi. along. Thank you. Ehara tene i America. This is not New York. No, no it isn't at all. <laughs> no, make it the kainga. You're definitely back in Aotearoa oh, now. Happy to be. <laughs> Ka pai tena. No ku huki te wai and I'm very lucky to have you here today. So what are we going to whip up? I wanted to make brown butter apricot cake, which isn't necessarily Māori, but it's one of those dishes that makes me really happy and is really easy to do and just everyone loves it. Then I'm going to do a seared snapper with a kawakawa lemon butter emulsion, which is just like a fancy butter sauce and some fennel puree. Karawe then, now that sounds amazing. Gati mataki here, where do we start? Uh, let's start with the brown butter cake. Okay. Oven on? Yes, please. So, uh, 180. How thin? What is that? It's a silpat mat. They're non-stick and they're really good for baking. Oh and you reuse gosh. it and reuse it. And it's great if you're doing stuff like this, which is like sticky caramel work on the bottom. Because ah. it doesn't get all like, you know, like peeling little bits of paper off anything. You just push and clean. So, but you still want it sprayed, right? Yes, please. Mapu here. So I've got my spray on. I'm going to get the caramel started. I'm going to get you to break down the apricots. Right. Hold it here and put them in half. Yep. Yep. What are our ingredients for that sauce then? 50 grams butter. I just melt that a little bit first before adding the brown sugar, which is about 150 grams. I just like give it a little push around just so everything's mixing in there. This brown sugar is looking pretty good. So it's going to go in there in the base? Yeah. Be careful. So it doesn't actually need to touch the sides? No. Just spread it out a little bit and like a little goes a long way so don't go too crazy. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to grab these guys and put them in the bottom. Just like arrange them around. Mm -hmm. And so did you just squish them? I just squish them in. And what we'll do with this is we can just set this to the side while we do our cake batter. The reason I do this first is so it cools down a little bit because oh, okay. if the sugar's still hot and you put the cake batter straight on then the cake batter's going to melt out as well so you just want to sort of get this done out of the way, then move on to the next step. So um, what we're going to put in is 300 grams of brown butter. Uh, brown butter is when the milk solids have been toasted. So we'll grab some butter, a pot, and a whisk. So what are the stages here? You get it boiling, obviously. Get it boiling. Whisk it the whole time, because what's going to happen is the butter's going to separate, and so there's going to be this super clear stuff on the top as it clarifies, and then the milk solids are going to sink and they're gonna toast up. So this is good to go. Immediately get it off the heat. Coffee cool. cool. and keep on whisking it. Whisking. When the bubbles start to sort of like chill out and stop going nuts, then just throw it in the fridge. <laughs> so here's some um, the brown butter, nice and cool. So what you wanna do is you really wanna bring it to like a nice room temp mass again. So we'll go ahead and we'll put this straight into our KitchenAid. First thing we've got to do is we've got to cream the butter and sugar, just like you would any other cake. Yep, and then let that go on like a medium speed for like four minutes. So what I need to do next is just add three eggs, just one at a time, so just slowly like tip it in, give it a mix, tip the next one, give it a mix. So while that's going on, we'll get all our other dry ingredients together. The flour, uh, baking powder and the spices and a little pinch of salt. What I do is I sort of make a little like funnel out of it so it's easier to tip into the bowl. Do you mind just zesting okay, the lemon in. and then a little dash of vanilla essence. And then what we'll do is we've got our milk and we'll slowly add that in. It's so, looking creamy. Yeah, that looks good. So we'll get that out. We'll just go three quarters of the way up. It will like level out in the oven so like don't get too obsessed about pushing it into every little crevice. All right, that's good to go in the oven. And how long for it? I'm about 10 to 15. I'll always check it at 10 just to see what's going on in there. So we're onto the fish. And we're onto the fish. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to get the puree started. So I'll get you picking the kawaka off and um, I'll start thinly slicing the fennel. <laughs> And then we'll just quickly blanch it for like 10 seconds. And then we'll put it straight into the ice water. So I'm going to start with like a little bit of canola oil. 
Most people make purees and they just put it all in and then cover it with the liquid straight away, but I actually like saute it off because it like seals in the flavour. Once this is sort of cooked out, we're going to add a pinch of salt and 300 ml of cream, and then we'll cook that out a little bit longer, and then we'll turn it into a puree. So then what we're going to do is separate three egg yolks. We want them to go white, and we want it to sort of double in size. And we'll slowly add butter. Right there, is that looking good? That's looking awesome. Mm. Cool, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put the kawakawa into it. So we'll do that in the food processor. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And then we'll also put some lemon zest, so a little bit of lemon juice and some salt, and we'll just do that to taste. We can just keep this at room temp while we finish everything else off. So our fennel and our onions are all nicely cooked, like super soft. So we'll just start it without any liquid and then we'll add some if we need to. And in the meantime, I'm gonna start getting a pan ready for our fish. Before I put it in the pan, I just pat it dry. Because the drier you can have this, the better the skin will be. And then we'll get our sea salt. Don't go too crazy on this side because the other side will hit it again. So skin side down. And then I'll hold it there. Or you can use a fish spat if you're not feeling so uh, brave. So, do you want to do me a favor? Do you want to grab that baby fennel and then cut both of them just in half? So I'm just going to cook it in the same pan. Because why make more dishes? Dazzle naked to parodi hide it to kitty so the skin's going nice and brown. Mm. I actually cook it all like on one side. I don't flip it. I like, do it three quarters of the way, and then when I'm like, all right, we're close, then I throw butter in and I start basting, but I don't actually flip the fish over. Then, because lemon is awesome, hit it. Put lemon in at the very end, otherwise you're going to have that cooked lemon flavor, and that's not what you're after. You're after a fresh lemon pop. Oh, this looks pretty good. So I'm just going to take it out and put it to the side. We've got all of those beautiful ingredients ready, so how are you going to serve this up? Uh, nice and simple, I'm going to put some puree in the middle of the plate, snapper on top, and a, a dollop of our kawakawa lemon emulsion. They look perfect. So how are you going to serve these little beauties up? I'm going to serve it nice and warm with a scoop of ice cream and some basil tips. Well, look at your skills. That just looks amazing, but I actually think I could do it. Look at that beautiful crunchy skin. Butter going on. Yum. Mmm, mmm. I'm just smashing it now. This is like how snapper should be eaten. There's so many flavours. Like at the beginning, I was like, that's delicious, and then just more comes through. It seems like, yeah, you don't need to flip the fish at all because then you get crispy top and then you get soft bottom. So we better have a try of this amazing cake. You can see like our little um, apricots that we positioned nicely and we've got a little bit of a crunch on the top and that's from the sugar and also that sugar helps glaze the apricots as well. That is like a beautiful, the cobbler bit, but that brown butter really does make the difference, doesn't mm. it? I will remember so many great tips that you gave us today. Even though you're young, you are bringing such an amazing flavour to Aotearoa. Oh. And the world. Oh, please. Stop being so shy. Just, oh. I, mean, I, always, yeah, I always get told off for of being shy.